What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more Sherlock Holmes crimes and punishments. We're going to continue with Bloodbath. And last episode, I interrogated uh, these three people. And I have a bunch of clues here. Uh, deduction stuff. So let's start putting some stuff together. Um, broken glasses. Um, So steam moisture, the pressure of water is due to the humid atmosphere caused by the steam. Unexplained clue, the presence of water in the blood is an unexplained clue. It must be somehow linked to the murder process. Um, We're gonna do that for now. A possible silver weapon and item of silver has been recently melted. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, I, I'm still a little stuffed up. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. <clears throat> um, so let's just start putting stuff out here, you know? <clears throat> so Blinkhorn's humiliation, Blinkhorn's work was saved by the arrival of Sir Rodney, but at a high cost to his morale, uh, Blinkhorn's interest. Blinkhorn's work was saved by the arrival of Sir Rodney. He was thankful for the possibility of their working together and the chance of learning from him. I don't know. We'll just throw that out there for now. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, I'm just about to start clicking, you know, oh, okay, there we go, moral secret, why would Sir Rodney be hiding anything, could his discovery be the motive for the crime? Oh, hold on, wait, what's this, the last expedition, find out where Sir Rodney was several days before his murder and uncover his precious secret. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so let's see. Our task find the missing weapon that was used to kill Sir Rodney. Uh, what important discovery was Sir Rodney about to make? All right, so we made our way home, and what should we do next? I'm going to look on a map. Um, I said look on a map at home to identify the location where the, um, now we have two. The maps. guy was. Whoops! I just kind of. Um. All right, so we are right. Right What's there. Back, back. There we go. We are visiting a location in St. Albans marked on Sir Rodney's map. All right, let's go look up some clues. All right. <clears throat> this archaeological site has been abandoned. I'm always wondering what's on your mind. I this up. I keep canceling out um text. All right, so uh, so this place has been abandoned. Ooh, let's look. This is the map of the site. We are at the heart of an old Roman city. All right, I'm gonna try to read this without making any mistakes this time, but I don't know if you can hear it, but my throat is a little eh right now. So uh, bear with me. Um, okay. <clears throat> followers of Mithra's were com were com wow. Follows followers of Mithra were covert 
worshipping more conventional deities such as Juno and Neptune in their everyday lives. Mithras temples were usually found below the temples of other gods. Mithras followers often refer to their traditional deities to gain passage to the Mithraeum. The example of the Mithraeum of Dio in France is interesting as the entrance was located beneath a carved statue of Diana. The, this entrance was possibly revealed by a clever stone and rope mechanism, which may never have been discovered if the water infiltration had not destroyed the mechanism, opening the way down to the Mithraeum. Mithraic temples can be found in Rome, Ostia, Numidia, Dalmatia, Britain, Britain, I don't know, and along the Rhine says the Danube frontier, while being somewhat less common in Greece, Egypt, and Syria. <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, more reading. And the empty coconuts that they used to imitate the sound of horses who... Horses hooves, another strange ritual for the old gods to keep the ear the key to to keep the evil spirits away. The people, feeling that the dark eye was upon them, would melt their valuables in the fire. Sub Saharan tribes burned fruit and the rich Roman families spared no expenses, melting silver or tin. It is not recorded if such valuable offerings were thrown away with the ashes or if they were reused at a later date. Oh, I'm out here reading like I'm hooked on phonics. <laughs> oh my gosh. Might as well get this over with. <clears throat> the knife used by Mithras for the Tarakteni, the sacrifice of the bull, is originally a carved sacrificial blade of Persian origin. Its curve can be from 5 to 15 degrees. The name is derived from the Persian Shamshir, which means sword. This radically curved sword family includes the Shamshir, the Shemitar, the Tawar, the Kili, the Pulwar, and the Mongol Saber. A myth of the golden knife is the key to the Mithraic mysteries that some describe as an equivalent to the Holy Grail. The gold knife carries a curse that will spill the blood of the unworthy who dare touch it. Aha! Oh, I just stole something. Ooh, another document to read. Um, okay. <clears throat> The cult of Mithras was a mysterious religion practiced within the Roman Empire from around the 1st to 4th century AD. The name of the Persian god Mithra, adapted by the Greek as Mithras, was linked with a new and distinctive imagery. Worshippers of Mithras had a complex system of seven grades of initiation with ritualistic meals. Initiates would meet in the underground temples called Mithrae that were retained in large numbers. The iconic scene of Mithras show them as being born from a rock and slaughtering a bull. Tarakteni. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I need to do another analysis on that and conversation on that. Okay, whoops, what's that? The door has been left open. Someone did not care or was in haste. Okay. I was about to say another document. Is that a Cyclops? Um, do I need to look around this whole place? 
Uh, I'll probably cut to some action or or the next uh, clue. The Cyclops, a one-eyed creature helping Vulcan at the forge. Vulcan, the god of fire and metalworking. So I found a pit and it has archaeological tools. Excavating tools, a bucket, shovel, and brush. So I took the spade. I don't need the ropes for now. Uh, anything? No. All right, so I found some statues here. Uh, Neptune. Neptune, the god of the sea. Uh, Minerva. It is a statue of Minerva. Uh, the rock. It is a broken statue of a bull. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's look at this board here. This is the map of the site. We are at the heart of an old Roman city. The gas buffets were used with ropes and hooks for sieges. Okay. So, do I need to go get that rope now? I'm gonna wait though. Uh, let's check inside this this little uh place right here. Hut. See if we can find anything interesting in here. Uh, another document, of course, of course. Dear Lord Blackmore, the manager of the bath, Sir Gregory Pitkin, was quite a nuisance at the start when I arrived. After you stepped in, he became rather more helpful. Occasionally, people of his rank are not well suited to a work of such great magnitude. They lack the necessary vision. In a few weeks' time, I hope to bring good news of the Strand Land Baths. I am on the verge of discovering a major archaeological artifact, one that might be used politically by your party to demonstrate the strength of our ancestors and fulfill the need to protect our empire from any present and future threats. Kind regards, Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Okay. Um, more reading. Calvin. Hobbs and you consider yourselves as being so smart and funny. I had a good laugh when you froze Miss Durkin's notes about the arch of Hadrian in the ice. However, our thesis exams are just ahead, and as you are the so-called brains of the improbable duo, I have to warn you that my gastrofets motto, the ancient Greek crossbow, and not the medical device to relieve constipated people, as you might have thought, is not to be touched, or else I'll have to inform Mr. Wormwood about everything you've done these past two years. P.S. I hate Hobbs tuna sandwich. I ate Hobbs's tuna sandwich. S. Spittle. The door has been left open. This is a reproduction of an ancient Greek crossbow. This. Okay. Um. The gastrofets were used with ropes and. All right. So, uh, let's go grab this rope, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, I wasn't able to grab the ropes, but I did not come down here earlier, so I want to check this out. Ooh, I can push T. This wall was covered with mud recently. What could be hidden here? Oh, I got the trowel. Oh, frigidarium. I can see now. 
Frigidarium. It is located at the Roman Baths in London. Someone took the time to hide the fresco, but what for? I need to visit this place. All right. So I need to visit. I need to visit the Frigidarium, but I feel like I need to grab that rope for something. But it's just not letting me. Mr. Holmes, we've cleared the corridor to the Frigidarium. You can visit it now. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. All right, let's go. These baths are becoming sinister. All right. Oh, I feel like this is gonna be Perhaps a puzzle. I find some clues by activating the flagstones. Oh. I mean. If you think that'll work. Uh, let's see. Scorpion. Uh, Caduceus. Trident Jug <laughs> All right, so let's just put let's push all of them and see what happens. Okay, so I went back to the, um, the yard to see if they would say something else, and lo and behold, yes. Because I was just trying to figure out that puzzle for the longest time, and I got nothing. So let's see what, what they have to say about, about Mithras. Mithras. Oh, so much. It was the core of our work. Why do you ask? Were you seeking the golden knife? Ah. <sighs> I see you are an amateur. Yes, the golden knife was our grail. It is said that it bears the only text explaining the ritual of the cult of Mithras. I understand. I read something about immortality. A myth. Uh, the knife would provide immortality only to the worthy one. And yet it is cursed, and it would kill you if you are not initiated. Hmm... Did you expect to find the golden knife at the baths? Well, Sir Rodney thought that it might be there. Uh, did you observe the knife representations there? They are so extraordinary. Uh, and we had hoped that... Uh, oh, it is a tragedy that he has passed away, taking all of his secrets with him. As soon as I've been released, I will continue Sir Rodney's researches in his memory. All right, let's... Talk. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. The paintings in the baths are focused on Mithras, I understand. Yes, they are what make this place remarkable. And that is why Sir Rodney came here? He believed that the golden knife, which is an ancient ritual item, was hidden somewhere around the baths. I admit that it would be wonderful if it were true. And you are not concerned by the reputation of this artifact? You mean the curse? Before someone is dead, it is a blessing. After they are dead, well, then it becomes a curse. <laughs> Alright, let's talk to the last guy. Please escort... Perhaps you could explain the cult of Mithras to me. No. There is nothing to say. We, we, we are not the worthy ones. But Sir Rodney believed that he was? 
He was wrong. I, I have visions. The golden knife, the, the mummy. Oh, it's all my fault. Calm down, Mr. Garrow. Mm. I'm not sure that I can be helpful at the moment. Um, okay. Alright, so we know, um... <clears throat> Uh, Garo's weakness. Garo is melancholic. He's a victim of over-medication, hence the hallucinations and unpredictable behavior. His state has been worsened by the strike of Sir Rodney's death. Alright, what else? Alright, pick Pitkins worries Pitkins feels rather uncomfortable postponing the public opening of the Roman baths because of Serrani. He was angry because of this. Pitkins hopes Pitkins expects to receive much of value from Serrani's research. The work will increase the bath renowned popularity. Alright. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, what? Uh, find the missing weapon. Do you have something else to ask? Okay, okay. Um,. Oh, let's go. Let's go and do the analysis. And then we will call it a episode. Um, yeah, because it's kind of getting kind of getting long. We're going to have to figure out the puzzle in the next episode because it might take the whole episode to even figure out. There are 12 pieces here. Let's try to gather them. All right. So 12 pieces. Um. I will count this piece as a starting point. I will count. Okay. Risky for her to rotation. Um, so that goes there. Um, okay, this might take a little bit, but I know for sure. Let's let's do. Okay. I will count this piece as a starting. Or maybe not. Um. Actually, no, I feel like that does not go there. I feel like yeah, that goes there. Um, that goes there. Ah, okay.
this is going to take a little bit. Okay, making progress. Um, okay, so I have that. Okay. Okay. Turn that that way. Oh, okay. This that go right there. Turn this all the way around. And then this one turn around that way. It is a mold there and it is go. ready for casting. The mold is prepared for casting. We just need to fill it with certain material. Sir Rodney has made a reconstruction of the mythical golden knife. He seemed unafraid of maledictions and yet... The mold is prepared. Half a glass of water should be enough to create a plaster solution. See what we have here. Okay. This knife is very similar to that described by the coroner as the weapon that killed Sir Rodney. You should not leap to any hasty conclusions, Watson. Okay, okay. Check if we can create a silver knife with the materials found. Okay, we're making a little progress, but that is actually going to be it for this episode. Uh, I am almost at an hour and I want to keep these videos down to at least 30 minutes. So if you guys are enjoying it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And we will be back tomorrow with another video. I'm out. Peace.